Hello everyone and welcome to Edip Search Clinic. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to discuss yet another trial from ESCO 2025 on colon cancer management. So we already discussed the atomic trial on colon cancer which was focusing on deficient mismatch repair genes in stage 3 after resection. This is the breakwater trial and this is dealing with another subset of patients. Only 5 to 10 percent of patients have this mutation and metastatic colon cancer. So whenever you see trials, you have to understand what is the inclusion, which of your patients benefit from a particular trial. So this table is something that all of you will know or will need to know if it comes to managing metastatic colorectal cancer. These are the mutations that you commonly see. We will do a separate video on molecular genetics for colorectal cancer. But we know that RAS wild type is the most common frequency and the other is BRAF mutation which is seen in only 8 to 10 percent of patients. We already saw deficient mismatch repair or microsatellite instability high which accounts for 4 to 5 percent of metastatic colorectal cancer and 10 to 15 percent of resectable stage 3 colorectal cancer. HER2 amplification is rare, NTRK fusion mutation is also rare and TP53 is common. It's a prognostic marker. So when it comes to the breakwater trial, they are discussing a specific mutation in metastatic colorectal cancer which is the BRAF V600E mutation, which is a harbinger of poor prognosis. And it is based on an already done trial, which is the Beacon CRC trial in 2019, which studies Encorafeni plus Cetuxima plus or minus Binimetinib, right? So this Beacon trial has already shown what you can do in treating BRAF mutation and metastatic colorectal cancer. So why a combination therapy has been proposed for BRAF mutation? And don't worry if you don't understand this pathway, but it's a very commonly seen pathway in our books when it comes to molecular genetics, which is the EGFR pathway, the ras raf mek ERK pathway. That is how it is known as. We have inhibitors at different points of this pathway. But when there is BRAF V600 in mutation, we know that even when we use a single therapy targeted to this mutation, the downstream pathway has multiple collaborative genes. And what that results in is an escape from inhibition. So if we inhibit BRAF, MEK will take over. If we inhibit EGFR, the BRAF MEK pathway can take over, something like that. So what we are trying to achieve but in beacon trial or in breakwater study is that we are going to use combination therapy that is acting as multiple targets like cetuximab and penitumumab is an anti-EGFR antibody. BREF inhibitor is encorafenib that we are going to see in this study and MEK inhibitor is a downstream inhibitor. So in the same pathway, we are trying to inhibit at multiple points so that the factors that can cause resistance or activate this pathway from directly MEK or ERK can also be taken care of. So this was the basis of the Beacon trial. So this is the study of the Beacon trial 2019 where they used Binimetinib, which is a MEK inhibitor, Encorafenib, which is a BRAF inhibitor, and Cetuximab, which is an EGFR inhibitor. So you're blocking a lot of targets in a specific pathway and avoiding resistance. So what this trial studied in 2019 was a triplet therapy versus doublet therapy versus the standard of care, which is Folfiri with Cetuximab or Irinotecan with Cetuxima. Doublet therapy is encorafenib plus Cetuxima, which is these two. And triplet therapy is addition of binimetinib with the doublet therapy. Now, this trial was done to compare the triplet therapy with control arm as well as doublet therapy with control arm and then triplet therapy with doublet and 
it showed that the doublet is as good as the triplet therapy. So when we look at the outcomes, the triplet definitely had better outcomes when compared to the control arm as in the doublet, which also had better outcomes when compared to the control arm. So that is why when it comes to the breakwater group, they are trying to study the doublet in combination with m 6 in BRAF mutated colorectal cancer. So when it comes to the breakwater trial outline, now we know it is metastatic colorectal cancer with BRAF V600E mutation. So it's a specific subset of metastatic colorectal cancer. Patients with measurable disease by the RACIS 1.1 criteria and no prior systemic treatment for metastatic disease. Of course, the patient should be fit. So ECOG performance status is 0 or 1 with adequate bone marrow, hepatic and renal function. If patients have had prior BRAF or EGFR inhibitors, they are excluded. MSI, H or DMMR tumors are excluded. RAS mutation is an exclusion criteria. You are randomizing the patient in three arms, which is the EC group versus the EC plus Folfox group versus the standard of care. Remember, EC is Encorafeni plus Cetuximab as we saw in the Beacon trial of 2019. So the doublet plus Folfox versus the doublet alone. Primary endpoints are progression-free survival as well as overall risk reduction. And secondary endpoint is overall survival. Remember that when it was presented this year in 2025, the overall survival analysis is still interim. It is not the final overall survival analysis. When it comes to progression-free survival, the Encora, Fenip, Cetuximab, Folfox combination group had a better median progression-free survival of 12.8 months versus 7.1 in the standard of care and 6.8 in the doublet group. So that means that progression-free survival was definitely better when you combine these molecules with modified Folfox 6. In the interim analysis, the overall survival was again nearly double in the combination group versus the standard of care group. Median of 15 months in standard of care versus 30 months in EC plus modified Folfox group. So if you look at the table here, the response was 58% vis-a-vis only 38% in the standard of care and progressive disease was less in the combination group. So confirmed objective response rate was nearly 60% with only 49-40% median in the standard of care group. P-value was significant. So a 50% reduced death risk using the combination of Encorafeni with Cetuximab with Folfox 6 and survival was definitely better 30 months versus 15 months. Tumor sync rate achieved was nearly 66% versus 38%. So a new standard of care for BRAF v 600 e mutation which is seen in 5-10% to of metastatic CRC cases, side effects hit 56% of patients. So that is one area where the combination did not do well and we need very fit patients who will tolerate this therapy to have these kind of outcomes. Of course, when you are combining targeted therapy with chemotherapy, the cost is going to be quite high. As this trial had interim analysis of overall survival, long-term outcomes are still awaited. However, it's a very poor prognosis when patients have BRAF V600E mutation and if this combination can give a better survival then it is definitely worth exploring and we should look forward to the long-term survivals as well as further trials in this direction. From the Beacon trial to the Breakwater trial, the doublet seems to be working. Thank you.